The Bible says in Ezekiel 33, 6, but if the watchman sees a sword coming and does not blow the trumpet to warn the people, and the sword comes and takes someone's life, that person's life will be taken because of their sin, but I will hold the watchman accountable for their blood. In this video, I'm going to share with you seven supernatural dreams and visions that I received from the Lord shortly after I was shown the Revelation 12 sign several months prior to it occurring. The Bible states in Acts 2, verse 17, In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. The first vision that I received from the Lord back in 2016 was so supernatural that it's probably going to be hard for a non-believer to comprehend just how real these visions were. When I look back on the content of those visions and after several years of reading the Bible and starting to understand how these visions relate to scripture and actually what's transpiring in the world today. When I look back on what I received from the Lord, I feel special and I feel like this is why I've been called to be a watchman. The first vision that I received happened shortly after the Lord revealed to me the Revelation 12 sign that occurred on September 23rd, 2017. One evening I was sitting on the couch randomly flipping through the television looking for something to watch and then something supernatural started to happen. It was right out of the movie The Matrix. All of a sudden my eyes suddenly started flickering uncontrollably as though information was being downloaded into my brain. As it was occurring, I knew that something supernatural was happening, but I just went with it and then it stopped after about 10 seconds. Later on that evening, as I started to fall asleep, I could feel myself dozing off. Then the vision started to happen. Suddenly I felt myself being whisked away into space and I was leaving Earth at a speed that I couldn't comprehend. I ended up reaching to a destination that seemed about as far as Jupiter and then all of a sudden this large rock started to appear right before my eyes. And as I started to float towards it, I was thinking to myself, what is this thing? You know, I didn't know what it was because I hadn't read about anything in the Bible at this point in time that there was a large asteroid out there. But as I grabbed onto this rock, I felt myself just floating there holding on to it saying what is this and this thing had wormholes just burrowed throughout the whole entire rock it was just a fascinating vision then the vision changed all of a sudden it suddenly everything went dark and it felt like i was almost in a movie theater or at least part of the scene and off to the right was this huge nuclear explosion and there was this mushroom cloud a brilliant mushroom cloud just reaching up to the sky it's something that i've never ever seen before and then I shifted my eyes to the left side of the screen. And then all of a sudden off in the distance, I see this massive volcano just erupting, spewing lava high into the air. And then everything went dark again. And I was thinking to myself, that was unbelievable. And then I look in front of me and everything started to come into focus. And then this purple neon triple helix starts rotating in front of me. And at the time, I didn't even know what a triple helix was. I mean, I had studied biology and I remember, you know, studying a double helix. But at the time, I was like, what is this thing? And it really took me a long time and a lot of studying the word of God and researching what the triple helix is all about. A few weeks later, over a period of about three months, I received several vivid dreams that were so real that I could remember every last detail. That's how I knew in my spirit that these dreams were from the Lord. I'm going to first share each dream as I experience them. Then I'll share my understanding of what I believe I was shown each dream means. The first dream I had was a short dream, but it was so surreal that it felt like I was in a Hollywood movie. I had just gotten into my car and I was looking up at the sky and it was so brilliant. There was just stars everywhere. Then I see this object appear out of nowhere. And then I realized it was this planetary system that was entering our solar system. The next thing I knew it, I saw this yellow object coming closer and closer. And then I realized it was this fireball coming right at me. So I jumped out of the car just in the nick of time and the car next to me just exploded. And I could feel the vibration. I could smell the sulfur in the air from this explosion. And I ran in the house and then I woke up. The next supernatural dream that I had took place in my old neighborhood at my friend Rob's house who I played Little League with. We had decided to go visit Jay who lived two houses over. Jay was also on our Little League team and ironically haven't seen him since I was a kid. So Rob and I knocked on the door and this girl answered and we asked for Jay and she said that he wasn't home. 
but she was there babysitting two two-year-olds and asked us to come in to see the children. So we did. And as we entered into the house, I noticed this big green tank in the middle of the kitchen. And I'm thinking to myself, what is this? And she's like, well, would, would you like to see the kids? And I said, sure. So she walked me over to the green tank. And as I got closer and closer, I realized that there was something in the tank growing. And as I got closer to the tank, I realized there was two demonic small children in the tank. One was half fish and half human. The other was half fish and half snake. And I looked at her and she just kind of smiled at me. And, I, and then I woke up. Now you got to understand that this dream came out of nowhere. I don't watch sci-fi movies. I don't read Greek mythology. I don't know why I was having this dream, but it took me a little while to figure it out. And several months later, I was able to put the pieces together and understand why the Lord was showing me this in my dream. So I've saved the best dream for last. This dream happened probably seven months after I received my new spirit from Christ. I had been reading the Bible and studying the Word of God and learning about the rapture from other folks on YouTube. And I became part of this YouTube community of various ministries, which I gained a lot of my understanding from. And I believe that the Lord also led me to these ministries. One evening, I was asking and praying the Lord. I said, Lord, show me about this rapture. What is this rapture thing? And I asked him, what would the rapture be like? And then one evening, as I was falling asleep, I saw this flash of lightning. I mean, it was so brilliant. It wasn't even a flash of lightning. It was like pure sparks of energy and it just went flashing across, you know, my mind. And I believe that that was the Lord showing me how quickly we would be raptured up. And then later on, uh, a couple days later, I was looking at this city and it was all dark and a big YouTube symbol flashed over the city. And then all of a sudden I saw all these heavenly bodies just going up to the sky. And I knew that was a rapture dream. And he had showed me that, you know, this is, this is what's going to happen. So for those who, you know, don't believe in the rapture, I mean, this is, this was evidence for me that this is the, the real thing and, and it's going to take place and hopefully soon. It wasn't until I read the book of Revelation chapter 8 that I realized just how profound this vision of the asteroid was because I hadn't even read about this event yet. After I had received the sign in the heavens and the Revelation 12 sign, I went straight to the book of Genesis. So this event wasn't even on my mind. The Bible prophesizes that a star or some type of meteor or asteroid called Wormwood will fall to earth and be used as one of the Lord's plague of judgments during the end times. If you can visualize what a piece of wood would look like if worms had burrowed throughout it, this is exactly what that meteor in my vision looked like and was an exact description of what the Bible says. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. If you do your own research, as I have done, you'll find that there's been a significant increase in near-miss asteroids over the past few years. In 2018, the White House of Science and Technology actually released a National Near-Earth Object Preparedness Strategy and Action Plan, which outlines the steps that NASA and the Federal Emergency Management Agency would take over the next 10 years to prevent dangerous asteroids from striking the Earth. So this is the real deal. I'm not making this stuff up. If you just look at the Hollywood movies that have been produced over the past 10 years, such as Deep Impact, Armageddon, Asteroid, Transformers 4, and even kids' movies such as The Good Dinosaur and Ice Age, you can see that the media in Hollywood is predictably programming the masses for some type of event that will happen in the future. But that's another whole entire video in itself. I'll leave you with one final confirmation that confirms that a meteor or asteroid is going to hit the Earth. I was praying to the Lord last October and I was asking him, Lord, you know, please show me a sign that these things that you showed me in my vision are still going to happen. And as I was going down the highway, it was about five o'clock in the morning, heading to the airport. All of a sudden up in the sky, this big meteor just came down right in front of me. And it was clear that my prayers were being answered. And he was confirming to me that what he had shown in my vision is the truth and will transpire eventually on the earth.
In my vision of the nuclear explosion, I was not shown any specific location that would be destroyed, only that nuclear war would be one of God's plagues that he would use to bring judgment on the world. Many months after receiving my vision and studying the Word of God, I learned in Zechariah 14.12 that the Bible describes very specifically how nuclear war will be used to bring judgment against those who come against Jerusalem. It's clear that the producers of Terminator Judgment Day took a page right out of the Bible to produce this scene. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. In Jeremiah 49, concerning the prophecy of Damascus, the Lord also states that he will kindle a fire in the walls of Damascus, and it shall consume the palace of ben Hadid. The word kindle in Hebrew means to burn up, set a fire, to desolate. So from this description, it looks like Damascus is going to be destroyed from nuclear war. If we apply these two scriptures, what's going on with the current state of the world today with Israel, Iran, and Syria, it's looking like Israel is likely to do a preemptive strike with a nuclear bomb and just desolate Damascus, fulfilling the Isaiah 17 prophecy. There's another great city mentioned in the Bible in Revelation 18 that will also likely be destroyed by a nuclear type of judgment. This city is referred to as a woman named Mystery Babylon, the mother of prostitutes and abominations of the earth, who sits on many waters and is called the hammer of the earth and rules over all kings of the earth. I'm not gonna try to convince anybody in this video that Mystery Babylon is the United States. That would take too long, but you can take that to the Lord and read Revelation 18 for yourself. I can tell you from my own personal experience and why I believe it's Mystery Babylon is because the Lord revealed this to me personally through a supernatural experience that I just don't want to get into because it would take too much time to explain every last detail. And I also believe that the Lord was revealing to me in that vision of the nuclear explosion that the United States would experience these types of judgments. In my previous video titled Part 2 Signs of the End Days, I cover how the frequency and volcanic activity would be a sign of birth pains as we approach the time of the tribulation. But I believe the vision that I received of the large volcano erupting was the Lord leading me to his judgment described in Revelation 8.8 8, when a burning mountain falls into the sea, killing half the sea life and destroying half the ships of the sea. And the second angel sounded, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood, and the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and the third part of the ships were destroyed. There is actually a real life scenario right now at this current time in the Canary Islands and off the coast of Africa on the island of De Palma, where there are two high risk volcanoes that experts say could cause this very scenario that's described in Revelation 8. When I first received the vision of the triple helix DNA, I had no idea what the Lord was trying to communicate to me. It wasn't until I got through the entire Bible that I realized how pervasive DNA is mentioned throughout the entire Bible, starting with the book of Genesis 3.15, when the Lord had to put enmity between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. But nothing could have prepared me for what I read in Genesis 6, when the sons of God came into the woman of men, and they bared children. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them. The same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And all the others together with them took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one. And they began to go in unto them, and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms, and enchantments, and the cutting of roots, and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant, 
and bare great giants, whose height was three thousand ells, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish, and to devour one another's flesh, and to drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. When you believe the Bible is the Word of God and you've been shown the truth, it's pretty clear that our entire history of the planet and the story about evolution has been a lie to keep us from knowing what really happened before the flood and why God had to destroy the earth. Not only had men's heart and thoughts become evil, but all flesh had been corrupted by these fallen angels from breeding with humans and other birds, fish, reptiles, and mammals. Now we know where the stories of half-human, half-animal hybrid creatures comes from within Egyptian, Chinese, and Greek mythology, and where my dream about the half-human and the half-fish in the fish tank in the house starts to make sense. If you can overcome your cognitive dissonance and change your belief and unlearn the lies that you've been taught and programmed from birth, then you can actually start to see how Satan's agenda is in plain sight manifesting itself in movies and televisions and throughout society. In Matthew 24, 37 through 38, it describes exactly how it will be. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Matthew 24 is fairly clear about what it'll be like just before Jesus returns for the second time. People will be eating and drinking and giving in marriage, basically carrying on business as usual, and then sudden destruction will come before Jesus returns. But I also think the Lord is revealing to me through the vision of the triple helix, as well as my dream about those hybrid creatures grown in the tank, is that it will be like the days of Noah described in Genesis 6, where there was Nephilim before and after the flood. It would be impossible to provide hard evidence to prove that these experiments to resurrect these fallen angels beings are actually taking place. But I can tell you for certain that as I was developing this video, I had been praying to the Lord to confirm that this is the understanding that he has given to me so that I get this right. And just the other day, he showed me exactly what I needed to know to have the confidence to make this video. I received my confirmation while I was driving on my way to hockey. I was praying and asking the Lord for confirmation that the vision that I received about the triple helix DNA and the dream about the hybrid creatures was in fact Satan's attempt to resurrect these hybrid fallen angels by merging human DNA with fallen angel DNA. On my way there to rink, I had planned to stop at CVS to pick up an ace bandage because I had pulled a muscle in my leg, but they didn't have it. So I ended up stopping at this place called Rite Aid, which was another pharmacy. Just so happens it was Rite Aid, right? I was getting the right aid when I received this confirmation. Anyways, when I finished checking out and finished the transaction, on the receipt was the amount of 23 and 69. And I knew right away the Lord was telling me that yes, my understanding of the triple helix was correct. 23 chromosomes multiplied by three equals 69, and that's the triple helix. So I said to the Lord, I got it. I said, so what you're telling me is that the triple helix is going to be used to merge ancient Nephilim DNA with human DNA, right? So I finished playing hockey and got home. And as soon as I got home, my son turns on one of his favorite shows, which is River Monsters. And it just so happens that that episode happens to be about a hybrid half human, half fish species that had been seen and Jeremy Wade was tracking down doing the investigation. I mean, you can't make this up. It was about mermaids. Then I received my final confirmation just last night because I knew I was going to be starting this video and I just wanted to be certain because I don't want to put any information out on the web that isn't true. And so I was laying down, getting ready to go to bed, ready to read my Bible. And I just looked at my Bible and I said, Lord, just give me one more final confirmation when I open this Bible up. So I opened randomly to a page pointed 
and my finger landed on two words, man and beast. I mean, you can't make this up. So you discern whether or not this is an accurate confirmation. But to me, I asked for three confirmations and I got all three. And that's why I decided to do this video. It wasn't until I attended a utility technology conference that I realized just how close we are to as in the days of Noah. There was a gentleman by the name of Leonard Brody who was a guest speaker. Brody is considered one of the 30 most top business and technology visionaries in the world. He's also been known as a leader of the New World Order. I mean, you can't make this up. Leonard was addressing the rapid pace of change and innovation and disruption facing the world today and what to do about it. So if there's anyone in the world who knows which direction the world is going and what technologies are going to be introduced over the next 10 years, it's definitely him. Brody left us with a vision on how artificial intelligence and digital intelligence is transforming the world at a pace that most people in society can't even comprehend. He also left us with a sobering fact that most people are going to be left behind without a job because of the rapid piece of technology is going to put them out of work. I guess this is the reason why there's concept of a universal income floating around the internet these days. Leonard also described how digital identities and holographic imagery will revolutionize the entertainment industry and breathe new life into past performance artists such as Michael Jackson, Tupac, and even Elvis. The first thing that comes to my mind, I don't know about you, is Revelation 13, 15. The second beast was permitted to give breath to the image of the first beast so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship it to be killed. I mean, we're talking about the exact technologies that's described in Revelation. Um, we're here, folks. But what really helped me to understand how close we are to as in the days of Noah was when Brody shared how the advancement in gene editing software such as CRISPR has basically enabled anyone with an engineering degree to be able to resequence DNA from humans or animals and combine whatever species they desire, trying to play like a godlike creator. I mean, it's unbelievable, guys.
The purpose of doing cloning of monkeys and use uh, monkeys as uh, experimental animals is really for the human health, uh, for the curing of human disease. There are many other animal models you can use. You can use mice, and that was widely used, but there has been difficulty uh, in using that as an animal model for the human disease because mice are very far away from... Matthew 24, 37, but as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. As the scripture tells us in Ecclesiastes 1.9, The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done, it is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Cloning is something that the elite of this world, led by fallen angels, that they've been doing for many, many years, They've been doing it with fish, with pigs, with cattle. They've been doing it with sheep and many other animal species. But they're now slowly but surely, according to them, moving towards monkeys. Because according to what they're telling you, the monkeys are as close to humans as they can possibly be in terms of their genetic makeup. So if you're going to be basing your thoughts based on what they're saying, humans are next. The elite with their technology, they're moving more and more and more towards the abominations that you will soon see walking the streets. We're headed towards those moments, folks, where the abominable will be openly accepted right in front of your very eyes on your regular old street corner. If we're still here many years from now, 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now, what you will see is going to be abominations left and right because the elite of this world are out there trying to play God and they keep you entertained and they keep you entertained and they keep you entertained and you don't realize it but they keep you entertained and as the rise of transhumanism uh, as these elite are cloning they're creating hybrids with animals they're creating technologies that according to them can allow them to live eternally. Because many of these individuals that are of the elite, they believe fables. You know, 2 Timothy 4.4 4, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. They believe fables that they can take their consciousness and upload it in an avatar. They believe fables from fallen angels that they can actually create a clone of themselves, transport their consciousness from one body to the other, and live eternally. These are fables. These are deceptions. Second Thessalonians 2.9 Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. These are beings. These are fallen angels. Principalities that are appearing to world leaders all over this world as beings from other planets, as beings that are coming to enlighten them, as aliens, extraterrestrials. But it's lies, it's false signs and wonders, it's fables, it's deceptions. But as all of these things are ramping up all around the world, most of humanity is being kept asleep and most of humanity is being kept distracted with politics especially, especially here in America, everything is Trump, 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 Trump versus Hillary versus the deep state. Oh, come on, man. These people are so brainwashed into this whole thing. And by all means, Trump has done a way better job than Hillary would have done. And he's done a lot of good stuff, too. This is not me saying that I don't like the guy. But what I'm telling you is, is that while you're worried about a wall and about a tax plan, 
they're cloning animals they're 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 literally leading towards the point where women will marry robots where where men will marry a female robot where microchip IDs are being developed and will soon be pushed down people's throats while we're worried about a wall this is what's happening and while you're worried about your own country's politics what's really happening in a bigger scope is that the elite are playing God and are keeping you entertained with all of these worldly things but think outside the box and understand that what is arising among you right now is demonic is demonic because Satan knows that his time is short. Do you know that your time is short? Do you know that right now we should see Christ while we still can see Christ? Satan knows his time is short and soon we're gonna be dealing with time travel and all of the demonic things that Satan is trying to do. But do you know that right now as you're watching this video, Jesus Christ is calling upon you to turn to Jesus Christ today. That Jesus Christ desires that all men come to repentance and that includes you. And that every second, every moment that you delay that opportunity to come to Jesus Christ. Is a second wasted. As mentioned, Jesus said... In his scriptures, so many prophecies that are coming to pass right before your very eyes. Matthew 24, 4, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. But what we're witnessing all over the world is deceptions, abominations. And what frustrates me is that people are asleep. And this is why it's important for you to study the Word of God and stay grounded in the Word of God because the distractions keep you in a state where you're not seeing what's really happening out there in the spiritual realm. And what's really happening out there in the spiritual realm, Ephesians 6.12, is purely demonic and its aim is putting you asleep slowly but surely at wearing you down with all of these distractions so that when Satan and his minions pull the trigger it's going to cause many many people's faith to be wow as in the days of Noah so shall the last day be right very few were saved in the days of Noah Make sure that you're staying strong. Make sure that while you can get in that ark, you can get in that ark, get in it now. And follow God's commandments and follow God's instructions and be obedient like Noah was. Because as in the days of Noah, things are going to get rocky. Things are going to get difficult. And that ark's door is going to close at some point in time. Make sure you're in that ark while we still can get in the ark. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. When the Lord revealed to me the Revelation 12 sign several months prior to when it occurred on September 23, 2017 in the Constellation Virgo, I knew in my spirit that he was also revealing to me that the red dragon mentioned in the scripture is a mysterious celestial object that he will use to bring about his judgments during the end time when Christ returns. So when I received this dream about this celestial object that was entering our solar system that almost hit me with a fireball, I knew that it was the Lord reinforcing me that this object was the red dragon mentioned in Revelation 12 and that he wanted me to investigate this further so that I could warn people about this approaching system. When I did my research, I learned how this object likely shaped the course of almost every cataclysmic event in the history of the Earth. 
In the Sumerian texts that are dated thousands of years old, this object was identified by the ancient Sumerians as Nibiru, which means planet of the crossings. In more modern times today, this planet or this celestial object is known as Planet X, the Brown Dwarf, Nemesis, Black Sun, and most recently, people are calling it Earth's twin binary sun. When I was growing up back in the early 80s, I remember the mainstream media publicly disclosing to the world that researchers had identified this as our 10th planet at the time. What's interesting is that this object has not been covered by the mainstream media since until just recently last year, two Caltech researchers came forth with proof that there's an existing planet beyond the known planets in our galaxy. What we have discovered is that numerous features of the Kuiper Belt, a field of icy debris beyond the orbit of Neptune, can be understood if the solar system possesses an additional ninth planet that resides well beyond the orbits of the known planets. When we looked at the outer solar system, we, we realized that while most of the, the very distant objects, these objects beyond Neptune, beyond Pluto, most of these objects, they, they all go around the sun and they're all sort of pointing off in all different directions, but the most distant objects all swing out in one direction in, in, in a very strange way that shouldn't happen. And we realized that the only way we could get them to all swing in one direction is if there is a massive planet also very distant in the solar system, keeping them in place while they all go around the sun. And we started looking at this and thinking, this, this, is, this must be either a coincidence or it's uh, caused by something else. It can't be caused by a planet because that's crazy. There are no planets out there. I went from trying very hard to be skeptical that what we were talking about was true to suddenly thinking, oh, this actually might even be true. So the object itself likely is more massive than the Earth probably a little bit less massive than Neptune. It sits right in between that terrestrial to giant icy planet range. Its orbit, unlike the orbits of the known planets, is not nearly circular and planar. Instead, it is exceptionally wide, 20 times bigger than the orbit of Neptune. The orbital period of the Earth is, of course, one year. Right? The orbital period of Jupiter, the big player in our solar system, is about 10 years. The orbital period of this putative ninth planet is 20,000 years. We have nothing like it in the solar system, so it's new for us. It is, however, the most common mass of planets that have been found around all of the other stars. People have always looked at all these other planets in this strange mass range and said, wow, I wonder what these are. I don't know what these are because we don't have anything like it in the solar system. Looks like maybe we do. There are many telescopes on the Earth that actually have a chance of being able to find it. And I think that uh, many people will be inspired to use their telescopes. I'm really hoping that as we announce this, people, people start a, uh, a worldwide search to go find this ninth planet. History shows us that it's a bad idea to consistently say we have now reached the end of the solar system and there is nothing beyond what we already know and all those people who are mad that Pluto is no longer a planet can be thrilled to know that there's a real planet out there still to be found. Now in this video, I'm not gonna get into proving or disproving the heliocentric or flat earth model or whether or not planets do or don't rotate around the sun. The intention of this video is to share with you that this object is coming so that you can get right with Jesus while there's still time, and also to demonstrate how the mainstream media is once again softly disclosing to the public that there is a celestial object in space influencing the balance of Earth's magnetic field within our known space. I can also testify based on my professional experience having worked within the utilities industry for about 25 years that the major utilities here in California are majorly concerned about EMP type of an events coming from celestial objects in space. Namely, they've told me the sun where they've gone to the degree of actually performing risk assessments on all their major assets here. This magnetic pull on the earth will be so severe that the Bible actually describes in Isaiah 24:20 that the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. When I saw this, I couldn't help but think about the Nazca lines in Peru. Could it be that the ancient Aztecs actually knew about the pole shift and they were actually depicting this in the landscape rather than depicting a spider, which everybody assumes it is? The image that you're looking at is this celestial object seen through an infrared microscope. 
Isn't it amazing that the Lord knew that when the technology was available that this image would actually look like a red dragon that's described in Revelation 12? If you can't see the red dragon in this image, let me help you with some perspective. Next to it is a dragon from How to Train Your Dragon from Universal Studio, which just happens to be one of my son's favorite movies. I mean, tell me that these guys don't know about this object. And if you're watching this video, you probably know that this is the way Satan loves to mock us. If you go over to Google Skyview, though, and you punch in those same coordinates, you will find this. This is rather interesting to me because this is an area they went out of their way to black out and to hide. As you can see right here in this shot, you can see the area between the legs of the Virgin was completely blacked out as this constellation or this object whatever it is was starting to move out from behind that patched area so what we have now over at Skyview is if you go looking you will find this image this is what was hiding behind there the whole time and in correlation to this year 2017 I put another video out talking about revelation and the virgin with the moon at her feet with the crown of 12 stars above her head, clothed in the sun, and Jupiter will be going in between, right in here in her womb, in a swirling motion, and then exiting. Well, it's interesting that this red dragon is sitting right there between the legs of the Virgin, almost as to devour whatever she is going to give birth to. This matches Revelation 3 and 4, where it talks about the dragon sitting there at her feet waiting to devour her child. So this is very interesting. Now further to the left out of frame here, and if you go over to Stellarium, you'll be able to look at the constellations. You will see there is a serpent right down below her feet as well. But the serpent is wrestling with a man, and that is the newer constellation of Ophicius. What that actually is, in my opinion, is showing you Michael battling the serpent. And it's right there at her feet. And then we have this object of all places. We have to stop and think about this for just a second. What were the odds that everything aligned to give us the September date this year in 2017 for the woman to be clothed? with the moon at her feet, everything matching that specific date, then you have this coincidence of this massive blacked out spot that they're trying to hide. And then when we find out what's behind it, it is this ominous looking thing that sure enough looks like the face or the head of a dragon or something crazy. It fits the description. Well, I'm not sure what that is that I'm looking at. But I know what it looks like. This is an infrared image from Google Sky. Or, apparently, it used to be on Google Sky. But I've had a look today. And, like everybody has said, it's gone. This is Google Sky today with the overlay of constellations on it. And the pointed out there, uh, Virgo. I'm going to move it in so that you can see the uh, infrared spectrum there's a little box there but these are the lines on there that are showing up black and I'm, I'm assuming that's some kind of sensor thing but that's the box that's missing or allegedly missing there's no way of checking not now not now it's gone but people are saying that that image that looks like a dragon basically used to be in that box did a little bit more research and i found something really quickly that looks a little bit like this and scientists because they're really clever and no more than we know are saying that it looks like a dark matter bridge whatever one of them might be dark matter is supposedly 27 percent of the whole universe's mass and uh, you can't see it and you can't detect it so it's a very, very easy theory to defend. 
I wonder if it's a coincidence that the Vatican owns the world's largest binocular telescope with an infrared device that they've named the Lucifer device. <laughs> you can't write this stuff. The Vatican has priests stationed here in these mountains who are doing research on space and even other inhabitable worlds. So I'm a Jesuit priest, but here in Tucson we have a research base of the Vatican Observatory. So the Vatican Observatory has ties that go back several hundreds of years. But why I find this story particularly interesting now is when I heard about it, I called my friend Dave. He's been a science journalist longer than I could possibly remember. You mentioned this last week, I'd never heard of them before. I asked some people on here and they basically said, what? Uh, very few people, you know, space journalists even. I just find that really weird. I think the Vatican Observatory doesn't have a, a big press office like, uh, like some of the rest of us do. So they came here when their site in Italy became too light polluted to really do forefront research. It didn't shock me when I found out that the Catholic Church was worried about dates and calendars. And what did surprise me was when I came here to Arizona and started meeting Vatican uh, Observatory astronomers to find out that they also were interested in magnetic white dwarfs and asteroids and something more than just the calendar. That, that was cool and that was a bit of a surprise. Wait till you find out about the Vatican astronomer saying he's operating with Project Lucifer. Okay, I promised you we would find out uh, the, 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 this great Catholic astronomer, the number one, is operating with something called Project Lucifer. What is that? Well, up on top of Mount Graham in Arizona, there's, a, there's an observatory complex. It consists of three very high-powered telescopes. One is the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope. There's a, there's a radio telescope, and then there's one called the Large Binocular Telescope. This is the most powerful telescope in the world. In fact, they told us they can get better images of space than the Hubble Space Telescope can. Hmm. Now, attached to this telescope is an infrared camera named Lucifer which is really a, a kind of a, a, an odd name um, <laughs> so. for a camera. And you know, from the information that we gathered, this thing was named by the Max Planck Institute and some German astronomers. But the Vatican is part of this conglomerate up there, that, that, and they're all working together. Now, what this instrument's used for is astrobiology, for looking for exoplanets, looking for other worlds. And uh, the infrared spectrum is also very useful for seeing things that can't be seen with the naked eye and many ufo researchers have noted that you can see a lot of ships and entities that you normally can't see tell me about what the vatican astronomers are telling you or what other experts i mean you you had a research team Right. Tell me a few of the things they're telling Well, first of all, the day that we spent it, uh, uh, on Mount Graham, the entire day there, we had the Jesuits speaking to us face to face. Mm -hmm. We also had systems engineers. It was astonishing the access that they gave us. And one of the things we found amazing in the use of the Lucifer device and even the other telescopes is how commonly the astronomers spoke of UFOs. We, we were just taken back by the fact that it was almost a nuisance to them I, I... that there are so many. This telescope, the Vatican Advanced Technology Telescope, it was the first of the new technology telescopes that has been considered pretty much the norm now in, in developing telescopes. With the advance of computer technology, we have the capability of bringing that advanced technology directly into our telescope. So it's an expandable, it's almost like it's a living machine, so it can grow as uh, technology grows. Meanwhile, the Great Red Dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads, whose tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth, is the Nibiru system, passing through our solar system with great destruction. Listen to this eyewitness to this coming system, what he actually saw through the Hubble telescope. Have you ever wondered what the real purpose of the Hubble Space Telescope was intended for? It was not to explore the universe and the solar system, as some have suggested, 
Rather, the reason for constructing this multi-billion dollar telescope and then placing it in orbit was for the purpose of observing the inbound Planet X. A June 6th interview with a Hubble insider states this fact as to the Hubble's purpose. He watched this mysterious body through the Hubble telescope and stated that this thing looked as if it was nearby and the Hubble got cut off and they encrypted it and that was the end of any transmission. So let's listen to this interview. Back in the 1950s most people aren't aware of it, but there was a scientific storm in America all through the late 50s about this thing out there in space because the astronomers were all watching it, and that was back when they weren't afraid to talk about it. It was in the science magazines. I mean, I had a subscription to, like, Popular Science and Health. It was on the front cover of the magazine one day in, like, 1961. And uh, I was really excited when I saw it because here's this giant red planet on the horizon uh, of the California coast and a humongous tidal wave coming in towards the coast and having grew up in the mountains of uh, the Sierras and this thing in the magazine it said this tidal wave coming in was going to be at least three miles high and I went and showed it to everybody in the house and they laughed and they said look it says right here there's nothing to worry about it won't be here for another 50 years. Hey, guess what? That 50 years has came and gone. And uh, this baby's out there in the sky. They've been watching it. I watched it. And I can tell you, this thing has got so much trash coming around it. You know how we live in a solar system? We've got nine planets and a big sun. This right. thing has got seven planets and its own sun. The years as it went by and we watched it, it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And then finally, about 08, we could see this thing like it was across the street. And we could see that it was a blazing hot ball of fire, giving out sparkles of red iron oxide dust for thousands of miles in every direction. And you could see the planet circulating it. Now, I'll tell you one thing that I really am nervous about. I think this thing's got a planet like ours circling it. This is its own solar system. We're about to have a solar system come through the middle of our solar system. This can't be good. But unfortunately, it looks as though that's what's going to happen. We were looking at asteroids right close to this thing. There's asteroids that are floating around right near the, uh, that are orbiting the, uh, the main sun itself. These things appear to be about 500 miles across. This thing looks like a giant red teardrop shaped dust cloud and you can see once if you if you're able to see it up close like we did you can see every speck out there now these cia people that i know say that we're not going to uh, uh be that close to it when it goes past us they're saying that in order to attain breakaway speed when it comes up around the back side of the sun its speed will at least double possibly more which will put it here earlier than everybody is saying it will and uh, that this thing will probably be about 20, mi 20 million miles from us when, when it crosses in front of us and then as soon as it flips us upside down we're going to go into its debris field. These CIA guys told me that this pole shift will probably happen from start to finish in around 28 minutes. That doesn't give you a lot of warning when you see that thing out there in the sky you're going to have to run as fast as you can to your underground facility because this is going to happen so fast. Now, see, here's another thing nobody's talking about. You've got this giant iron planet that they say is 47,000 miles across, getting ready to come up past us. And when well, it starts if, to approach us, if, it's going to start and have real serious effects. So is it a and planet then, or a failed star? It's not a failed star. It, it, you know, I saw this thing up close. It did not look like a failed star. It looked just like our sun. Right. Okay. It, the, would you call our sun a failed star? No. Okay. Well, you had said planet. I wasn't sure if it was like a, a failed star brown dwarf or a full sun. So it's a full sun? It's a, it, it looks to me like a miniature sun, just like the one we have. The only difference is, see, is our sun is uh, giving off flames and stuff. And this one's doing the same thing as it, but it's giving off this red iron oxide cloud of dust around it. And until it got close, we couldn't even tell what was in there. We knew we could see it was hot, 
and it looked like it was just a dull red when we were first able to discern it through the red cloud. But as it approached, it started to become more apparent that this thing is just orange hot, right. and um, it's got this enormous, and I mean enormous, the, at least 50 or 100,000 miles on each side of it, this red dust cloud that goes all the way around it. I know when we were watching it, as it started to make the upward swing to approach behind our sun, it was amazing. The red dust clouds settled down, instead of being around, it started to settle down into a V, like wings, upside down wings. Right. And I thought, boy, I wonder if that's where the ancient Sumerians got the idea this thing had wings, because, you know, centrifugal force is a funny thing. When it yeah. comes back up around the planet, when we see it in the sky, my guess is it's going to look like it's got wings because centrifugal force is going to be pulling the uh, red iron oxide dust and particles uh, uh, out to one side. This thing's going to look like a big red dragon exactly like all the ancient Sumerians and the Chinese and all the rest of them that had documented this thing's passing before. Uh, it didn't look like a white ball or a snow cloud or nothing. It looked like a big red iron oxide dust cloud with a superheated star in the middle of it. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind, and the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places, and the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. When you take into consideration the presence of this celestial object and look at climate change today and throughout history, doesn't it make logically more sense that our climate change has been the results of the effect of this object rather than human pollution? I can say one thing is certain for sure, that the frequency and intensity of the earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and the storm that we're experiencing today will certainly only get worse as this object gets closer. As always, I would encourage you to do your own research and also take everything to the Lord, because if you ask, he'll show you the truth.